Howdy friends, my name is Wes Lee. I repair band instruments for a living. Thanks for stopping by my shop today. Today's gonna be one of those cool days we're gonna do another uncasing video. That was a lot of fun last time. The latch still works. Okay. And the chorus of angels just started to warm up. You're reading that right. Vintage Selmer. Serial number dates this one to about 1953. Look at that lacquer. It's in gorgeous shape. So why is it here? The band is broken. So what we're going to have to do is actually take the, this key guard has to come off. All the solder will have to be cleaned up off of this. We're going to re-silver solder it, clean it up, put it back together. That's as far as that. Man, this is in great shape. Okay, let's go to the bench and drop a light down it. Let me turn off this light. So it'll... There we go. That's right. This light, if you like to have your music playing while you're working, you can turn it down on a dimmer switch. It also Bluetooths to your phone or any other device so you can have tunes playing while you're working and it comes out of here. One of the best investments I ever made. People come in the shop all the time and they're asking about where's the music coming from? I have a couple of light bulbs around the shop and they're all turned on and connected. It's pretty cool. All right, here we go. We've got the light set. You can tell by the reflections that this had a repad at some point. See that? We don't have to get up close. Somebody worked on this and did a repad. As Charlie Musselwhite says, I ain't lying. Those pads is gaping. This is terrible. From the F sharp up here. Look at that. This is terrible. So we've got to go through and we have to do that. It, it's exactly like this up here as well. That's what we're dealing with. We're going to strip it down, get this band off, clean this all up, make it look as original as I can, and then do the pad work. The part that you're going to be most excited about is fixing the band. The pad work is, I can't ever make good padding videos. They have to be done a certain way and not like that. So let's get to it. This is breaking away as well. But I think on what I want to do first, we'll get this one at the end. We're going to use it as a guide to make sure that we're in the right spot with, with everything else.
all of this black stuff was rust. And by annealing or heating up the red hot, you break through the corrosion. So also a trick that you can do on tuning slides when they're fused together. Okay, I've got the screws soaking and penetrating oil. It's gonna break down the rest of that corrosion. We're gonna to have to braze this back together. Now, before we can do a silver solder joint or braze joint to put this back together, we have to clean off all of the soft solder that is here. Otherwise, the heat will crystallize this soft solder and you will not be able to soft solder back on it. So we're gonna buff this off real quick. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a file, I'm cleaning up the edge, but also I'm giving it a relief, see? So this is this other piece that I haven't done yet. And notice that it's straight. And this one, I put some relief in it. And why did I do that, you would ask? You have to give the solder somewhere to go. It's a trick I picked up from welding. You feather your you feather the area back so you can make your weld go into here. Well, it's the same kind of principle. I want my silver solder, my braze, to go here, and I want to fill that. I have to have a gap for it to fill into. Almost perfectly with just a seam. But on the inside, I've opened it up and I'm going to be able to fill that and have plenty of strength in the joint. Let's jig it up, get jiggy with it. All right, while I'm getting set up, I'll break in and talk about Harris is the silver solder flux that I use. Uh, this is good brazing flux. This goes from... Uh, 800 to 1600 degrees. So this is what we use. This is the silver solder I use. Also a Harris product, Stay Silve, cadmium free. Um, it's part number F200. Okay, here we have a great braze joint, solid on the inside. You can see the flux left over. So now we're gonna go soak it in muriatic acid and get rid of that scale. Okay, so here's where we are. Notice they repat they use metal resonators here and plastic resonators here. I don't know. We're working with what we were dealt. But it went from that shady mess that was like this to now just the first three keys down to the G. Nice and solid. Good pop already happening. Continue on.
So this is where we are on the lower stack. That's the F sharp up there, the F and the E. Notice I've got these down. I'm working with the D key here. Gosh, it's just so off. The, the customer was hoping to use these pads since they were newly installed. But this pad is the just the complete wrong size. And you can also see that the key is not straight over the tone hole. So we've got to get everything put back in the right position, but you just can't use the wrong size pad. You, you can overcome a lot, but you can't overcome the wrong size pad. So, um, but you can see that uh, we're getting all this put back together well. And I found another issue. Uh, the B flat and the G G sharp hold down screws. Those have been uh, pretty boogered up. Uh, this is not this is not a problem, but they're frozen in there, so we're gonna have to uh, probably do that same heating trick and uh, get those unfused and get them apart, and then we'll work on that. Okay, you can see here that we've got the pad centered, pad cup centered back over the tone hole, new pad of the correct diameter installed, and just, oh, look at that, got a little bit of bounce back I've got to deal with. So this is why I use my fingertips, because I always want to feel light as touch as possible and I don't want to have to do that. I can feel whether if you add your thumb, you're now creating a clamp. That's opposable pressure. And a lot of people play that way, and that's fine. But I want to see that. You see, I want to see that mistake. I want to see that it's still hitting in the back a little more in the front. Even this is a this is a play condition. This is not an overhaul. It has to be better than this, right? And so everything has some memory to it. The key has memory to it. So this shows me that I need to go and adjust. So this is a slight, you know, it just needs a little bit more. You got to go that much more. You want your finger to stop. You don't want your finger to do that. If you're rocking the horn, you're playing too hard. The only time you should be rocking the horn is when you're jamming out. Okay, made a quick adjustment. Boom. This thing is going to be a hoss. Let's not let key pop. Man, can't wait to hear this one. As I made the way around to the bell keys, to the B and B flat, they both still miraculously hit. The solder around the seam seems to still be intact. So I believe that the band just broke because of age. All right, after pulling this out of the muriatic acid, you see we have a pretty good joint. We've got some cleanup work, grinding to do on the inside. Files that I like to use, 
These are Stuart McDonald files. There's a, these are a set of four. They go from a very coarse to an extremely fine. I like these a whole lot. So you might want to check them out. Stuart McDonald. So we've got our piece cleaned up. And not only important to me to do the rails, but also this inner part, because I believe if you leave the solder gunked up there, then you're not getting a clean clamp all the way around. So. Well, thanks everybody for dropping by the shop today. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. We learned some cool little tips and tricks on some things and that horn really throws down. That's a nice old tenor saxophone. Cool vintage stuff. My buddy Drew Different is going to be throwing down on that for sure. All right. Well, we'll see you next time around. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the videos and then liking and commenting. I really appreciate interacting with everybody. It's really cool. Wes Lee signing out.